my couture crafters we are still on this three yard uh quilt fabric journey fabric cafe donna robertson woo -woo, we love her i'm obsessed with her i can't i just i just am i get it i understand her quilts if you need a just a just a nice simple easy way no must no fuss you really don't have to think these are the patterns for you if you are new um these might be a cool place to start maybe not exactly brand new quilters actually she has like one for kids which i think is a really cool place to start even if you're an adult they're just they're a little bit more simple but i wouldn't necessarily say that these are beginner beginner friendly just because there's a few little things that i would do differently with the patterns and trying to understand the pattern and there aren't a lot of people who have done these quilts before. So if you look up three yard quilts, you'll see that there's a woman named April Story who's kind of going on her own three yard fabric journey right now. Three yard quilt journey right now. And then there's me and then there's Donna who doesn't do tutorials. She's just showing you her kits. So you're not really seeing how they get put together and some things might be a little bit confusing. So if you are like a confident beginner, like go for it. I mean, she does spell it out for you in the book and you, but I struggle with reading the directions and doing what they say i do much better visually it's just me maybe it's you too know your strengths so i did i've done at this point i think i've done three um of her quilts two of them were the throws and then one of them was uh, a twin and the twin one is where i show you how to zhuzh it up the one before this would be the modern charm and modern charm is a beautiful color story but in order to get that pattern, you have to have her book. And her book for that one would be Quick as a Wink. So she also suggests patterns if you don't want to buy her books. Her books retail for like $15.99, something like that. If you don't want to buy it, she'll give you a pattern with the kit. And it comes with a pattern card, Heartland. So I needed two throw size quilts. One's going to my husband's grandmother and the other one's going to one of my aunt's. And I needed to, and they were appropriate for both of them, but I wanted them to have a slight difference. So I chose to do the Heartland pattern for one and then the Modern Charm for the other. And they are very, very similar. I see why she suggests both. Um, they work really well with this particular fabric um, choice, but you can choose any three yards, any three yards. You just need to get a focal and then a light and a dark and her patterns will pretty much work with them which i think is really cool i mean the concept is just genius and right now she's gaining like she's gaining speed because she's putting out these youtube videos and her channel is just blossoming and she's getting more and more popular and i like her and i want to design for her tell her tell her to call me call me donna just kidding. just kidding kind of no really call me um but i just i can't stop singing the praises of three yard quilts i think they're genius um, I'm really, really into them right now, and I'm really happy that you guys stopped by so that we can continue this journey of these three yard quilts. We have a couple more coming, so stay tuned if you'd like to see how Heartland comes together. You can also get the Heartland pattern in the Pretty Darn Quick three yard quilt book, which I like, and the Heartland pattern on the back is the, the one in the corner, this guy right there, and here are the other patterns that are in this book. But again, if you'd like to see how it comes together and how simple it is, please continue to watch. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I love talking to you. All right, see you guys later. Bye-bye. Okay, so this is going to be the Heartland pattern. And when you get just a regular pattern, it just comes on this one sheet. Um, it's only the one side, too. I would love if she would split this stuff up just a little bit and give us just a little more space to read each direction separate from another. You know, they kind of run together and I get a little, I don't know, it would just be nice if they were kind of bulleted out so I could just do it step by step and maybe check off each step. Maybe, maybe that would work for me. Not that this didn't come out and not that it's all that difficult. It's just um, maybe on two sheets of paper, but I know that's a cost and all the things. Okay, so I am just uh, straightening up this edge and you need to be very, very um, tight <laughs> with squaring this stuff up because you really are using a lot of this fabric. You wanna be sure that you have the full yard because we're using it up. So I'm gonna cut some very, very large strips and one of the things that I like about her patterns and one of the things that makes it go so quickly is that a lot of times her pattern is a big block and then a pieced block, a big block and then a pieced block. And that just helps it go fast and show off the fabrics really, really well and 
give you an opportunity for embroidery if you so choose. Just nice and easy and gives, I just love a, a, a pattern that allows you to really show off the fabric. You guys probably um, know that I'm a paper crafter in addition to being a quilter and I do photo albums just simply to look at the paper. Like I really don't like to cover the paper up with the photo albums. I just want to see the pretty, pretty paper. So I'm kind of the same way with my fabrics. So now I am cutting down some more strips and these will probably be cut into little um, squares. There are a ton of half square triangles in these two quilts. So the one that I did on Wednesday and then this one here, there's a lot. So just be ready to do a lot of them. They don't come together really what I would consider fast, but half square triangles are magical. It's amazing what you can do with them. I'm hoping to do a video that shows what you can do with a half square triangle because once you get that, boy, it they really are magical. You can do so much with just flipping them around and turning them, so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to take this long strip here and we are going to run some borders along the sides. So that's one of the big differences between this one and the other one. This big square has a border around it where the other one does not have a border. That's one of the differences. And so you cut this down and you cut a bunch of them. I am so excited about having this new sewing machine. This is the first time that I have cut accurately. So these blocks are actually coming out to be the proper size, which is just amazing to me. The ones on the ends are always a little wonky, but no worries. It comes out, it's, it, the quilt turns out just lovely. So you're gonna go on ahead and add your border strips. You just add them to the side and then cut off the excess. You don't actually measure them and then cut, I mean, and then sew them. It's really kind of cool. You just sew them on there and then cut off the excess and keep going around the sides. Look at that. Isn't that a pretty block? These quilts come together so quickly because they're just so well thought out. I'm showing off the fact that I'm sewing a consistent quarter inch seam. <laughs> it's that serious. I'm telling you guys, a new machine just makes all the difference in my sewing. But like I was saying, these come together just genius. They, they come together so fast. They're very well thought out. Of course, you can sew a square to another square to another square. But isn't it better if you sew strips together and then cut them down? Absolutely. freaking lootly so that's what she has you do here to get the center of the block you sew some strips together and cut them down and when you look at it I mean I'm still I consider myself a newish quilter so I don't always think about the faster way to do a block I'm still looking at the block saying oh I can sew some squares together and of course I can but it's going to take me a whole lot longer I'm squaring this one up again. The ends get a little funky. I don't know why. No worries. So now it's time to start building these half square triangles. That tool that I'm using there is called a magic wand. I love it. I got it from Road to California. It allows me to draw a line a quarter inch from the center on either side. And after you draw that line, then you are going to put, and I'm drawing on the wrong side of the fabric. This fabric is so light. I was kind of like, wait, which side is the right side? And I think I did it wrong. <laughs> and then I had to go ahead and I'm using a friction pen. So I had to hit it with that heat. And I wasn't concerned about it because I know that some people say that friction pens come back when it's cold, but I live in LA, so that's not going to happen. And also it's going to get caught in the seam allowance. You won't be able to see it. So after you draw those lines, you go on ahead and sew directly on that line. Just sew down the line. I have used that tape. And if you see that triangle will ride the side of that tape. So you know that you are a quarter inch away. These triangles were kind of large um, for me to just use the tape. So I went ahead and marked them just to be sure. No sense in and guessing you know but if it was small enough or if you have an extension table and you have that tape you can just ride it you can trust it 
if you can get that tape on center, you can just ride the end of that triangle all the way up the line and you will probably have a quarter inch on either side without having to mark, which boy, you talk about saving time because marking each of these triangles is what kind of took up a lot of the time. It certainly wasn't sewing it because I now have this new machine that goes uber fast. Although I'm still sewing very, very carefully on it. But you see, I get warm and pick up a little speed there. That's me showing off, I guess. <laughs> so I chain pieced them all together on one side and then went back and did the same thing on the other side. And I've got this little um, blade saver there. If you'd like to see me put that together, check out the other video. I took an old blade and put it in the center. And so that's how I'm cutting the threads apart. After you sew down both sides, you're gonna cut your triangles down the center and then you'll have half square triangles, what? And you wanna be careful because this is what they call the bias. So these suckers are stretchy and I do get a little distortion, but not enough to make my stuff not come out properly. Just a touch of distortion here and there. Don't worry, I'm getting ready to come into the screen right now so that I can show you guys how I use my block lock. So the words block lock on this ruler, I'm putting on the light side and then I'm pulling it down until it locks in that seam. That it feel, it can feel the seam and then it just kind of stops. And that 45 degree angle runs all the way to the tip. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm cutting this at more than three and a half for my first cut. I put some pressure on the ends, I pull it back down, and then I put it exactly at three and a half and I square it up. I cannot just sew a perfect uh, half square triangle. I have to trim mine down and I find that if you make it just a little bit larger, you'll get it. This pattern already has them uh, just a smidge larger so that I can go ahead and get that perfect three and a half. No worries. Um, I'm going to put some pressure on that on the sides, rotate it around, pull it down to three and a half. And then we're going to trim again and that gets rid of the dog ears. And then I have very, very close to perfection, a three and a half half square triangle. And I think that block lock ruler, um, I think that's a five and a half by five and a half inch block lock ruler. So you can do up to, I think about five and a half inches with that one. They have all kinds of different sizes. They also make a half square rectangle ruler, which I want. I want to do a quilt with half square rectangles. So now let's start building our pieced block. And this is a little different than the other one that we did. You can see here that we've got the half square triangles facing a different direction. And the cool thing about this is once you've sewn them together, the ones that you use on the left are identical to the ones that you use on the right. So you can just do your stack just like this and trust that you can put it on the other side of that center square without having to worry about it. Something else that I wish that um, Donna Robertson did was tell you which direction to press your seams. Pressing seams is important if you want your stuff to nest and lock and line up properly. If you can, try to press your seams to the, um, to the center blank square. If you press them the other direction, you'd be adding bulk and you wanna not do that if you can. So I pressed the left one to the center, which is perfect, because again, it's gonna be fine for the other side. And then I pressed the one in the center, I pressed those seams outward. So now I have what they call nesting seams. So my seams are going one direction on one side and the other direction on the other. And I like to pin, I don't always pin, but for stuff like this, when you can actually see <laughs> where things line up and it's important that it line up properly. Yeah, see? And it lines up very, very nicely. And I'm just kind of doing a finger press here and it looks good. Look at me distorting and pushing all on my fabric. That's why we have irons. <laughs> So then I go ahead and just do a whole bunch of these more. Cut open my triangles, open them up and square them. And I think I had to use, I don't know if it was 24 or 48 um, triangles, but it felt like I was doing just a million, trimming them down and sewing them together. 
So as you can see, again, it's identical. And I'm just taking the time to mark my seams so that the next time that I do this pattern, if I ever do, that I know which direction to press the seams. That's like the only other little thing that she's really missing from these, these patterns. And for this one, again, like I said, nesting seams is, um, is important. I had a little overhang there. I just trimmed it off. Do you guys do that? <laughs> if you have just a little overhang, something got a little wonky because I probably pulled on it or pressed it too hard instead of just pushing the iron down and lifting it up. So I had to do a little trimmy trim. I square up my blocks as I go. So that way when I'm sewing them together, it's easy peasy. It's clean. Because trying to sew them together when you have a wonky edge does not work out well. And yeah, my quilt might not be perfect at the end, but these are not going to be jured. So I'm really not all that concerned. I don't think Big Mama is going to be checking to see if her quilt is perfectly square. <laughs> I don't think she is. So after you do that block, you just go on ahead and do one block, the other block, one block, the other block. And that is pretty much the quilt. And then you throw some borders on that on that sucker and that's that. And yes, I'm watching something on the YouTube while I'm working. I'm always listening to something. And these are the borders. Now, these borders got kind of interesting because I believe this is the one where the blocks are in the corners. And you really do have to measure in order to get those right. Not a big deal. Um, I just went ahead and sewed the blocks together. And then I put the cornerstone block on one side and then I measured and it all kind of worked itself out and I'm just cutting off the excess after sewing on the sides because the sides you just sew straight you don't have a cornerstone on your side seams just on the top and the bottom so Again, these are the border strips, taking off the salvage end. And you see my little bracelet, which is catching my eye because it's reflecting back to lights. <laughs> but those are my pins. That does not work as good as I want it to. Um, I probably would do better to just have a little tomato on my wrist instead of having that magnetic. The magnet isn't strong enough. I use glass head pins and it's, yeah, it's just not strong enough. So I'm putting on the cornerstone and then I'm measuring how long I need it to be. And then I mark it and then I cut it. Then I sew another cornerstone on the edge. And now we have two cornerstones. Now I suggest you pin when you do this so that you make sure that your cornerstone lines up exactly where you want it to line up. Make sure that your seams are nesting, throw a pin in there and don't just pin right there, pin the whole way down. That's where I, um, I wouldn't say I messed up, but just pin the whole way down. Or you can use those wonder clips. I have wonder clips too. I actually prefer them because if I pin a pin in something, you can rest assured that I'm going to stick myself. I chose to use panels on the back. People don't use panels enough. And I think panels sometimes just need to be panels. So I'm trimming off the excess. Um, you can totally take that little border off completely if you want to be a stickler. But I used a panel and I sewed some borders on the panel with coordinating fabric. And that was the back of my quilt. Now remember, your long armor can only be concerned with one side of your quilt. So one of them came out super even. The other one did not. I chose to do a different border than what was supplied with the three yard kit. And this is that foot that I like to use for putting on my binding. If you'd like to see me do more of that, check out the other video that looks just like this one. And that's what my binding looks like by machine. When I do a two and a half, I think that's two and a quarter inch strips. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you on the next video. Bye bye.